The big story that we are making, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal is now in Enforcement Directorate custody at his residence at Civil Lines and will be produced in court tomorrow. The searches are continuing at the residence of Mr. Kejriwal. His legal team is pushing now for a late night Supreme Court hearing, but we don't know whether that will happen. Kejriwal may be produced in court virtually, is what we are being told. Supporters of Mr. Kejriwal have gathered at civil lines and at various places across the national capital. Okay, let's go across to our correspondents, Akshita, Shreya and Aishwarya. Akshita and Shreya outside Kejriwal's residence. Uh, Akshita, we were with you a short while ago where you said that... Uh, Mr. Kejriwal was still at home, but his supporters who had gathered outside, there was an attempt being made to clear them. Has the police successfully cleared that road outside Mr. Kejriwal's house? Uh, yes, uh, Rajdeep, we've seen the entire area being cleared off right now. All of the protesters who are seated here have been detained. They're clearing this stretch because we're hearing from police officials that in just about an hour from now, Arvind Kejriwal will be taken out of his residence. And you see all the barricading around me. Uh, behind this is, of course, Kejriwal's residence, but there's another gate. He's going to be taken out from that particular gate where there's a lot more security, a lot more barricading, and taken straight to the ED headquarters. Now, the stretch all through that route is being closed off, cordoned off. For the moment, all of the ARP supporters who had gathered there have been detained. Uh, traffic is being allowed along these stretches, but we're being told it will be shut off very, very soon. And then you're going to have a lot more security on ground. You can see behind me also the rapid action force ready on standby, ready to crack down on any ARP supporters who gather here. They're coming in batches constantly, Rajdeep, trying to also ensure their voice is heard, trying to voice their position against their leader's arrest, against Kejriwal's arrest, but they're swiftly being detained as well because the police is ensuring that no matter what, there's no breakdown of law and order that happens in the streets of the national capital. And it's because of the same that we're hearing that when Arvind Kejriwal, uh, which could happen in about one hour from now, when Arvind Kejriwal is officially taken out of his residence, he will be directly taken to the ED headquarters. The medical examination will happen within the ED office, so they don't have to shuffle back and forth. And then tomorrow, in all likelihood, they will also produce him at the Rouse Avenue Court is what we're hearing. But nothing being left to chance, essentially, as you can see around me, with the kind of security that's been deployed at every vantage point, barricading, heavy barricading across the streets of Delhi. Uh, for national capital residents, of course, it's also a traffic nightmare because all of these roads have been closed off until just a few moments ago. And we're hearing from the Delhi police again in about 10 minutes. They'll shut this off completely so that there's no problem when Arvind Kejriwal is taken out. But as we speak, Rajdeep, behind these barricades, behind these gates that you see, and we're still quite a distance away, you still got the searches taking place right now, which is why the Enforcement Directorate hasn't moved just yet with Arvind Kejriwal. They're saying that they will complete the searches, complete all formalities, and only after that will Arvind Kejriwal be taken out. Let me go across uh, to Aishwarya. She's outside the Enforcement Directorate headquarters in the national capital. Aishwarya? Uh, Kejriwal likely to be brought there to the ED headquarters. Give our viewers the sense of what you're expecting now. Well, let me tell you one thing, Rajdeep. You know, the place where I'm standing, Arvind Kejriwal's house, is exactly 14 kilometers from the Enforcement Directorate office. So from what we understand at the moment, it will roughly take him a little more than an hour for the Enforcement Directorate officials to uh, get Arvind Kejriwal out of his house and to bring him here. The place where I'm standing, this is the Enforcement Directorate headquarters where barricades have been put up in large numbers because the police now... The Delhi police and also the enforcement directorate officials are now expecting that there is a possibility that Arvind Kejriwal supporters might actually come. And, uh, you know, there might be a little bit of a tricky situation here. That's the reason why police deployment in such large numbers. And this actually is the way that the officials will be taking to take Arvind Kejriwal inside. The office is actually 100 meters from where I'm standing, Rajdeep. They are all on standby. Everyone is now ready. And we are also expecting the number of policemen to be deployed, at least at this point. This is the point from where the car will take Arvind Kejriwal inside. The deployment will increase in about an hour or so. And Rajdeep. what you're telling me, he'll be produced in a PMLA court tomorrow? Is that the expectation? 
Well, that exactly is what we are expecting at the moment. We also know that the lawyers, the Aam Aadmi Party lawyers, the Enforcement Directorate lawyers, there are hectic parlays that are now taking place, Rajdeep. Obviously, the Aam Aadmi Party wants that the hearing should take place to tonight. But, you know, it's almost 10 now, so it looks a little difficult. But, yes, from what we understand, he will be first taken inside uh, the ED office. The medical examination will take place, Rajdeep, and we are expecting Arvind Kejival to be produced. Okay, let me go to Shreya Chatterjee. Shreya? Uh, the Ahmadbi Party workers, we are told, are going to hold protests across Delhi tomorrow. What are you picking up? What is the mood as you are you speaking to some AAP workers? What are they telling you? Well, Rajdeep, you know, as we talk, the uh, the Ahmadbi Party supporters they continue to come in numbers uh, one by one. But this particular gate, Rajdeep, I want to point out, is probably the one gate from where Arvind Kejriwal will be taken out is why the Delhi police is not allowing any supporter to even be here for some time. They are quickly taking them away, detaining them, because this is the point that is being now regulated as per traffic movement, because uh, in all likelihood, in an hour or so, this very route is probably going to be used by the Delhi police to actually give a safe exit route for the Delhi CM who's been arrested by uh, the ED officials. And so far as the protests are concerned, they are continuing one by one uh, protesters gathering. But at this very spot, the Delhi police is not allowing them to stay for more than a minute. Okay. Uh, just to get you, uh, 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 Munish Pandey joins us. Munish uh, tracks the enforcement directorate very closely. Munish, you, one thing about Munish, he tells you he knows uh, when someone's going to be arrested. I remember that happened with Hemant Soren and now with Arvind Kejriwal. He had warned us this afternoon. Arrest could happen. Munish, you have inside sources in the ED. What are they planning? What, what happens next, Munish? Well, Rajdeep, at this point of time, the searches at the residence of Arvind Kejriwal is continuing. Once the searches is over, then Arvind Kejriwal will be taken out of his residence and then he will be at the ED's headquarter uh, for the night. And tomorrow morning, based on the security situation, the ED will decide whether to produce him physically before the, uh, before the court for further custody in the case or there should be a virtual hearing. But as far as today's, days, uh, today's uh, uh, you know, the entire high court hearing is concerned, uh, Rajdeep, that was extremely important because during the hearing, uh, the judge asked uh, enforcement directorate that when uh, you are summoning Arvind Kejriwal again and again, why aren't you arresting him? So that is when the ED decided to disclose the evidence before the high court judge. It was in a closed chamber. And after going through the files, the judge was of the opinion that uh, Arvind Kejriwal should not be given any protection from arrest in this case. And ED was, uh, uh, you know, free to take any coercive action. And that is when ED decided to conduct searches. Now, as far as today's uh, search operation was concerned, remember, we have been given to understand is that, Rajdeep, uh, some electronic gadgets have been seized, some documents have been seized, but most importantly, important part was the questioning of Arvind Kejriwal because in most of the cases we have seen that before arresting a person the person is questioned for at least three four hours before he is placed under arrest but in case of Arvind Kejriwal there was questioning of less than one hour and when I asked the ED sources that why uh, you decided to arrest him based on one hour of questioning what they said that they had come prepared with some evidence while questioning Arvind Kejriwal, he was confronted with some of the documentary evidences which included the statement of certain accused recorded under Section 50 of Prevention of Money Laundering Act. It acts as evidence for the enforcement directorate. And when he was confronted, according to ED sources, he was not able to give any satisfactory answer and that was the time when he, they decided to arrest him. An arrest memo has been served. Uh, it will take at least an hour before Arvind Kejriwal will be taken out of his residence. But certainly, uh, Rajdeep, uh, no matter what happens, ED will try to keep Arvind Kejriwal in custody for next 14 days. And remember, the Central Bureau of Investigation officials are also keeping a close tab on this entire you know, uh, uh, um, arrest because once ED's custody is over, there is a high possibility that CBI will move an application that they also want custodial uh, interrogation of Arvind Kejriwal in this case. Okay, let's just listen in to Ravi Shankar Prasad, BJP leader, Munish, full of details there. Custodial inter interrogation also, CBI may jump in. Uh, Ravi Shankar Prasad, BJP leader speaking, listen in. 
हाँ तुमने जवाब दिया नहीं तो कानून की प्रक्रिया है भ्रष्टाचार के गंभीर मामले में इसके आगे मुझे कुछ नहीं कहना है लेकिन जो राजनीति कर रहे हैं वो करें अब देश भी देखेगा सुचिता नैतिकता की बात करने वाले अब जेल से ही सरकार चलाने की बात करते हैं नहीं यू हैव रविशंकर प्रसाद रिस्पॉन्डिंग नैतिकता करने वाले अब जेल से शासन चलाएंगे यस प्रीति यू हैव मोर डिटेल्स वेल यू नो इट सीम्स राजदीप any time now the chief minister will be moved to the ed headquarters a convoy of ed vehicles have moved inside the chief minister's residence so it's a matter of time when he you know is going to be taken away uh, you know at least uh, by what uh, okay. indications are coming in okay here. let's let's get in more voices at this moment harish khurana bjp spokesperson and delhi leader adil singh boparai spokesperson congress advocate supreme court of india joining me bishwajit bhattacharya senior advocate supreme court former additional solicitor general and aban Abhinandita Mathur, spokesperson of AAP, also joining me. Appreciate all of you joining us. Uh, let's come to each of you one by one to get all your comments to what we have been just witnessing: the dramatic scenes of a chief minister being arrested uh, at his from his residence in the Delhi liquor probe. To you, Abhinandita, uh, first is the Cong uh, is the AAP party feeling a sense of demoralization, disarray? Your leader has been arrested, and you heard what. Ravi Shankar Prasad said, "Those who spoke about netikta, about morality, are now talking of running a government from jail." Well, honestly, it doesn't matter what uh, any BJP leader or spokesperson say, because they don't walk the talk. Honestly, we were expecting this to happen, and not from today, but for a couple of years now, since this ED. Uh, started investigating the the, the liquor policy case. I'm Now, just talking to you at the moment because we are getting some breaking news, ma'am. ED vehicles have moved inside the chief minister's residence, and they are now getting ready to move the chief minister to the ED headquarters. So, Kejriwal to be moved to the ED headquarters next is what we are breaking at the moment. The ED vehicles moving inside the chief minister's residence. Yes, Akshita, you are there. What are you seeing around you? Uh, let me just show you quickly, Rajdeep, the kind of security that's being deployed here right now. You've got a lot more personnel being brought in here to control the crowds that are gathering. Like I said, there are AAP supporters who are continuing to stream in. They're constantly being detained. ED vehicles have made their way inside. This is from the other entry point of Arvind Kejriwal's residence. The media has been barricaded far, far away, uh, so nobody allowed anywhere close to really his residence. All of us are further away. The vehicles have gone in. We're here. that in some time from now uh, Arvind Kejriwal could be brought out taken directly to the ED headquarters so it's expected that in about 10 minutes that journey will be completed so there's no question of any sort of law and order issue that crops up but just to show you the kind of security that's been deployed here uh, they're leaving nothing to chance right now and ensuring that there's no scope of any sort of breakdown of law and order late into the night uh, but we are hearing that in less than 1 hour that's for sure arun kejriwal will be taken out by then these roads that you see a lot of traffic on i'm not sure if you can see that just rajdeep i'll ask madan to turn around and show you uh, you can see traffic right now but we're being told it will be completely shut off in just a bit and that's when arun kejriwal will be taken out the uh, officials right now are also keeping a contingency plan for tomorrow uh, knowing that he will have to be produced in court if they sense that things are going out of hand with aap leaders all set to hit the streets they will produce arvind kejriwal virtually so he doesn't have to be taken out of the ed headquarters we have also been getting an information that now congress leaders are also going to be gathering here outside arvind kejriwal's residence to register their protest over his arrest so things set to heat up here on the streets of the capital rajdeep and right now security ensuring that law and order is paramount that uh, you know leaders emotional aap Top leaders who are gathering here don't take law into their own hands. That is the clear priority here. Okay, we'll come back to you for more. Uh, we just, uh, 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 Abhi Nandita, I stopped you in between. What do you uh, wish to say? Give us a sense of what is your plan B, Mr. Kejriwal. Looks like uh, he could spend an extended period behind bars now. Well, so like I was saying, we were actually very prepared for this. Prepared in the sense that it was very obvious to us that there is one. leader in the entire country that mr modi does not like at all he's obsessed with him he follows him he tries to you know uh, halt all his work and so on 
So we were totally expecting this to happen. We believe that uh, you know Mr. Modi has one way of working, which is that either you join the BJP, either you bow down. Uh, and if you don't, or in case you challenge, uh, you know, the huge corruption of the BJP or the huge uh, uh, or, or so many incidents of injustice being done mm -hmm. by the BJP, then you are in trouble. You know, so and unfortunately for us, the BJP has not been able to defeat us in Delhi. And that is a, a huge sort of a, a, a dent on Mr. Modi's ego. So we have actually, you know, observed and seen him just being totally obsessed with Mr. Arvind Kejriwal and somehow trying to... Mm -hmm. Make sure that uh, he stops. But what the BJP does not understand is that we are not a routine political party. Um, we are a party that has come from the ground. We are a party that's come from a movement. People like Manish Sisodia ji, Satinder Jain ji, Sanjay Singh ji, Arvind Kejriwal ji. These are not people who are going to bow, bow down. You know, you can keep them in jail for as long as you want. Now, coming to a question of what our plan B is, well, Arvind Kejriwal ji is our plan A. We've also uh, moved Supreme Court right now waiting for that and other than that i mean there is no question okay. of a second so, plan and as okay so you're saying one, he will continue you know. okay you're saying he will continue as chief minister harish kurana my dear friend what's your response the law is taking their own course and we are seeing whole country was seeing this last six months there was a hide and seek between ed and arvind kejriwal nine summons will be given to uh, uh, arvind kejriwal he doesn't respect any one of them. He moves to the court, doesn't get relief. He moves to the court and says, "Give me a protection. I will. I will go in. I'm going to uh, 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 share, share the share things with the ED." But he doesn't get any relief. Point is, since last 14 months, in the same case, Manish Sisodia is in jail. His last curative petition has been dismissed off of the bail. Sanjay Singh has been. Uh, in jail since last few months. Supreme Court has clearly said 300 odd crore rupees uh, money trail has been found. Sanjay Singh's bail application pay, uh, court has clearly given an observation. The prima facie, there is evidence against uh, Sanjay Singh and other, other people. They don't believe in court. They don't believe in. They only have, they want to play a bechara politics. No, no, bechara nahi, but thoda bit, you don't, you don't, how do you respond to the charge of being vindictive? Before the election, suddenly the sense is that Mr. Modi and the BJP, according to the opposition, want an opposition mukt election. Rajdeep, Rajdeep, the first summon was served in October. That time elections of Lok Sabha was 16, six months away. Why, why the, he hasn't has turned up at that point of time? He should have given the, given the answer. See, what we believe uh, from the day one, the kingpin of this whole liquor scam is Arvind Kejriwal. A lot of questions has to be answered by him. So what I said, Supreme Court has clearly said there is a money trail. K. Arvind, who the money says, so the personal secretary said, uh, in the presence of Arvind Kejriwal, 5% to 12% draft document was been given. Samir Nair's statement was this, Vijay Nair is my boy, and it said by Arvind Kejriwal. So these answer was to be given by the Arvind Kejriwal. And Arvind Kejriwal was running off. Bhakta is the one who is hiding from the Arvind. You okay, know, so you are... You're it's saying he's been running a wrong. Yeah, uh, uh, Abhinandita, quick response. Yes, you know, मुझे बड़ा दुख हो रहा है हरीश जी के बात सुनके क्योंकि दिल्ली में हमने इतनी घटिया क्वालिटी की राजनीति हरीश जी कभी देखी नहीं है बल्कि बीजेपी की भी हालत खराब है इस टाइम दिल्ली में. दूसरी बात ये है कि ये जो सारी चीज़ legal aspect is one part. This is all happening in a political context, and that political context is not hidden for any from anyone, Harish ji. दो साल हो गए हैं आपको एक रुपया नहीं मिला है ईडी को एंड जो आप भागने के कह रहे हैं आई टेल यू हू द रियल भगोड़ाज आर भगोड़ाज आर नीरव मोदी भगोड़ाज आर ललित मोदी द पीपल दैट यू हैव हेल्प्ड रन अवे विद आर वेल्थ एंड आर मनी सो प्लीज डू नॉट टॉक Okay, so I'm, I'm getting, and I'm getting in political. Uh, 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 Abhinandita, Abhinandita, Harish. Okay, I'm, I'm getting. Okay, well, one minute. I'm getting in more breaking news. Reactions coming in from across political party lines. The uh, Congress, the TMC, the DMK are all coming out in support of Kejriwal. Uh, Rahul Gandhi has said a scared, scared dictator wants to de destroy democracy. Uh, Adil Singh Boparai, uh, uh, create a dead democracy. Adil Singh Boparai, are you all going to support Arvind Kejriwal? We are told Arvinder Singh, lovely other Congress leaders are coming to his residence. This is the same person who many believe brought down your Congress government of UPA in 2012-13, uh, attacked all of you for corruption. Today, are you going to back him? Mr. Sajjasai, this is sheer vendetta. 
And I think all of us have said this ad nauseum that the ED has become an extension of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Mm -hmm. But to expect a non-partisanship from the BJP mm -hmm. or the enforcement agencies is perhaps asking for a miracle. So be that as it may. The fact of the matter is the BJP has a clear objective. Mm -hmm. And those objectives are twofold. Mm -hmm. Number one, to arrest and hound opposition leaders. And number two, it is to cripple the financial resources of opposition parties so that their campaigns can be hampered. Take the case of the Congress Party. Mm -hmm. A purported oversight of 14 lakh rupees from the year 1994 has been used to freeze bank accounts to the tune of 200 crore rupees on the eve of election. Not 1994 is a separate notice, but the 2018-19 notice has been sent. Yes. There are two, there are two notices. Separate one notices, day. yes. But 1994 is also one such notice. Yes. So, so the irony today is that on the eve of the elections, the BJP, despite their hubris, appears to be rattled. Otherwise, why would they go after opposition leaders mm -hmm. in this brazen manner? But I think I have a larger question, and that question is to your viewers and the citizens of this country. Mm -hmm. We may have our political differences with different other political parties. The fact of the matter is today, a level playing field is being altered by the BJP. This is not good for democracy in our country. Okay. This is democracy. This is a symptom of, of the kind of politics you see in countries like Russia and elsewhere. This does not all go well. And the institutions, unfortunately, have collapsed. The checks and balances, the institutions which are supposed to seek accountability, have become cheerleaders. This is honestly, this is honestly the worst kind of politics which India has ever seen. And the BJP, it's it's absolutely no, so are you are you all fully endorsing are you fully because it was your party and your leaders, uh, Mr. Boparai, who had uh, targeted Mr. Kejriwal, Delhi Congress leaders, accusing him of being involved in the Delhi liquor scam. Today are you all saying that you all fully stand behind him because he's being targeted according to you by the Modi government? Mr. Sarasai, we have no doubt in our mind that the BJP is, is misusing the law and is misusing agencies, not just against the Congress party, but even against other political no, parties. No, but do you believe there was so a liquor scam or not? Mr. Boparai, do you believe there was a liquor scam? Mr. Sarasai, Mr. I'm not a court of law. I haven't seen the evidence. I will not second guess. But the timing and the brazen manner in which the Bharatiya Janata Party is exercising its, its powers leaves much to be desired and is symptomatic of the larger malaise of political autocracy and vendetta, which has become all pervasive in this country. Uh, Bishwajit Bhattacharya, uh, senior, uh, okay, he, he hopefully will join us in a moment, but words like autocracy are being used, Harish Khurana. The charge is being made, Mr. Modi is the great dictator. Rahul Gandhi is saying, dictator Agya. He's right. freezing the accounts of the Congress. He's arresting Kejriwal, arresting Kavita, arresting Heman Soren. Fall in line, nahi to ED aapke ghar aajayegi. Rajdi, when the, my friend from opposition says that the vendetta politics is going on, they insult honorable courts. When I'm saying this, since last 14 months, mm -hmm. Manish Sisodhi is in jail or by whom order? By the ED? No, by mm -hmm. the honorable Supreme Court order. Yesterday, a couple of days back, only curative petition had been filed and it has been rejected by, by, the, by the honorable Supreme Court. So when you say ED, ED is doing a vendetta politics, uh, vendetta uh, action is going on, you are, you are insulting honorable courts. When you say uh, this, this thing has happened to Congress people uh, of this uh, money blocking and all, mind it, court has even given, you have moved to the court and court has not given any relief to you guys. So my point is when they say vindictive politics going on, they are or disobeying or disrespecting uh, our honorable okay. courts. Those images that we are getting on the screen at the moment are from outside Kejriwal's residence at Civil Lines. There's a huge police presence there. And uh, we expect at some stage within the next uh, half hour, the ED to take Mr. Kejriwal from there to the ED headquarters, which is 14 kilometers away. Bishwajit Bhattacharya, former additional solicitor general, senior Supreme Court advocate. Is the case, according to you, a strong one? Because you've had others who've been arrested and most of them have not got bail yet. Do you see it as a strong case or not? Rajdeep, when the basic case says that you have increased commission by some 5-6 percent mm -hmm. and by virtue of that increase in commission, uh, uh, 338 crores uh, uh, profit has increased. Mm -hmm. And 
I can't understand how 338 crore becomes proceeds of crime. Mm -hmm. And for more than a year, there is not even a scintilla of evidence of any money trail. So I think these cases are all basically political cases and political cases are bound to fail. And you know, the, see the track record of enforcement directorate. Uh, you know, I've been hearing that they have attached 100,000 crore assets, but attachment is not an end in itself, confiscation. How much is the confiscation? Conviction rate is absolutely negligible, less than 1%, maybe 0.4% or 0.04%. So under these circumstances... No, no, the ED says in the cases that have gone to trial, the conviction rate is higher. You're looking at 0.1% in terms of the total number of cases which they have filed. I mean, why they are not able to go to trial? And I don't understand, Rajdeep, as the Supreme Court also basically, you know, observed that the constitutional right is supreme as far as Article 12 is concerned, arbitrariness of state action. Mm -hmm. This started from 1974 Supreme Court, uh, 74 page 555, Royapa versus State of Tamil Nadu in the context of, you know, Chief Secretary of Courts. You know, this equality and arbitrariness are sworn enemies. Equality is a rule of law in a democratic republic and arbitrariness is a rule. No, are you saying, are you, no, no, one minute, sir, not. but the court has not, court has not granted bail. Is that the nature of the PMLA or is that the nature of this case that there is prima facie evidence? I blame the court. I blame the court. You know, Rajdeep, Rajdeep, the courts also have to basically be sensitive to the law. You, you kindly remember, everybody blames the PMLA Act, but if you go through the Draconian Foreign Exchange Regulation Act of 1973, you see Section 59. Okay, I, I want to stop you. I want to stop you for a moment. Congress leader from Delhi, its chief, Subhash Chopra, uh, is Arvindar Lovely is there. Next to him is Subhash Chopra. Listen to Lovely. Congress ke account seal kiye jate hain. Heman Soran ji ko uthaya jata hai. आज दिल्ली के अंदर भी टाइमिंग देखिए आप किस टाइमिंग के ऊपर जो है वो एक्शन लिया जा रहा है जब चुनाव शुरू हो गए हैं तो निश्चित रूप से लोकतंत्र के लिए एजेंसीज का मिसयूज जो है वो शर्मनाक है और हम ये कहना चाहते हैं कि इस तरीके की हरकतों से चाहे वो कांग्रेस के अकाउंट सीज करने की बात रही हो या जो है इस तरीके से एक चुने हुए मुख्यमंत्री को चुनाव से पहले गिरफ्तार करने की बात रही हो कांग्रेस पार्टी इन सब बातों से घबराती नहीं है और इन बातों की वजह से हम और मजबूती के साथ चुनाव लड़ेंगे और आप पार्टी हमारी गठबंधन की पार्टनर है हम मजबूती के साथ उनके साथ खड़े हैं और उनके साथ मिलकर चुनाव लड़ेंगे ये जताने के लिए आज सुभाष चोपड़ा जी संदीप दीक्षित जी हम तीनों कांग्रेस की तरफ से आए हैं और निश्चित रूप से हम मजबूती के साथ अपने गठबंधन के साथी के साथ खड़े हैं you have uh, Arvindar lovely interesting the Congress is standing by Mr. Kejriwal at the moment remember the Congress is uh, in Delhi fighting three seats Mr. Kejriwal four in the Lok Sabha election the Congress at least at this moment Mr. Boparai you're standing by Mr. Kejriwal I repeat you were the party in Delhi that had said that there was a Delhi liquor scam Mr. Sadasai, we're a principal political party. Now, how are you principal then? I'll explain. I'll explain because today democracy is being discounted. Today democracy is being demolished. No, there's a rule of law. You're saying no. there's democracy, there's also no. a rule of law. As per the rule of law, as per the rule of law, if there is a case which has been filed based on a predicated offense, the ED has gone and uh, uh, begun investigation. Several people have been arrested. No Mr. one is bigger than the law. Without, without commenting on the facts of the particular case, the ED is taking action based on statements of co-accused persons. Now, we know in India how, how co-accused persons give statements in police custody. They can say anything. They're under pressure to say anything. Do they have an option no, to name anybody? So, therefore, the nature, the nature of the investigation and the manner in which the ED is conducting investigation demonstrates political vendetta. Today, let me, I've said this earlier, but let me again reiterate this. We're at a crossroad. Mm -hmm. We're at a crossroad where one path leads towards autocracy and the other path leads towards 
at least uh, preserving some... some I, I'm vital. just hearing Sandeep Dixit. Listening to... Uh, okay, we will try and go back to Sandeep Dixit. Delhi, uh, is speaking. We, yeah, go जो पिछले कुछ समय से हम लोग देख रहे हैं चाहे हमारे अकाउंट्स को फ्रीज करने की बात हो हेमंत सोरेन के अरेस्ट की बात हो केजरीवाल जी के अरेस्ट करने की बात हो ये ईडी इसको केवल चुनाव के साथ जोड़ रहा है इसका और कोई लेना देना नहीं है और इस बात को हम कंडेम करते हैं इसकी हम घोर निंदा करते हैं एजेंसियों का इस तरीके से मोदी सरकार का दुरुपयोग करना अपने में सरासर गलत है गैर लोकतांत्रिक है देखिये कोर्ट ही जा सकते हैं ये थोड़ी है भाई की आप आप किसी भी लोक लोकतांत्रिक पार्टी का चुनाव के पहले गला थोड़ी घोट सकते हैं आप चुनाव लड़िए आपको लगता है आपको केस करना है केस करिए लेकिन ये कोई तौर तरीका थोड़ी होता है और मुझे बताइए मैंने बहुत से रेट देखे हैं कहीं रात को रेट पड़ती है क्या आप आइए सवेरे करिए जो जो कुछ करना करिए आप बुला लेते हैं इनको बातचीत के लिए इन्वेस्टिगेशन करना था कर लेते ये कोई बात होती है कि रात को नौ दस बजे अच्छा रात को नौ बजे और सवेरे नौ बजे के बीच में क्या पहाड़ टूट जाएगा आप बुलाइए उनको आप उनसे बातचीत करिए इसकी कांग्रेस पार्टी निंदा करती है और उसी हम सॉलिडारिटी दिखाने यहाँ आए हैं कांग्रेस पार्टी शोइंग सॉलिडारिटी बट इंटरेस्टिंग प्रीति यू आर मेकिंग द कंपैरिजन फॉर संदीप या ओके लिसन इन टू आतिशी करते रहेंगे लोकसभा चुनाव के जस्ट पहले चुनाव की घोषणा होने के बाद इस प्रकार से दिल्ली के मुख्यमंत्री अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को गिरफ्तार करना सिर्फ एक चीज दिखाता है कि प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी अरविंद केजरीवाल जी से डरते हैं वो लोकतंत्र को खत्म करना चाहते हैं वो एक एक करके सभी विपक्ष के नेताओं को जेल में डालना चाहते हैं ये क्या तरीका है ये चुनाव जीतने का लड़ने का जीतने का क्या तरीका है इस देश में क्या लोकतंत्र बचेगा अगर चुनाव से पहले आप विपक्ष के हर नेता को जेल में डाल दोगे आप विपक्ष की हर पार्टी का बैंक अकाउंट फ्रीज कर दोगे तो ये सिर्फ और सिर्फ प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी की एक राजनीतिक साजिश है पॉलिटिकल फाइट में कांग्रेस कैसे आम आदमी पार्टी के साथ देगी देखिए हम हम लोग इंडिया अलायंस के गठबंधन के पार्टनर हैं और और सवाल कांग्रेस का आप पार्टी को सपोर्ट करने का नहीं ये सवाल ये है कि ये देश का लोकतंत्र जा किधर रहा है प्रश्न ये उठता है कि चुनाव डिक्लेयर होने के बाद जिस तरीके से आप इंडिया गठबंधन के लोगों को विपक्ष के लोगों को चुनाव से पहले उनके खिलाफ एक्शन लग रहे हैं आप दिल्ली के चीफ मिनिस्टर को गिरफ्तार कर रहे हैं आप एक हमारी पार्टी के अकाउंट सीज कर रहे हैं हेमंत सोरेन जी को उठा रहे हैं तो आप जो है ये किस तरीके का लोकतंत्र है हमारा लोकतंत्र जा किस दिशा में रहा है ये सवाल खाली कांग्रेस और आप पार्टी की नहीं है कांग्रेस तो मजबूती के साथ अपने गठबंधन पार्टनर के साथ खड़ी है प्रश्न आज देश के लोगों के सामने है कि इस लोकतंत्र को किस तरफ जाते हुए देश के लोग देखना चाहते हैं कांग्रेस शीर्ष नेतृत्व का क्या संदेश मिला है देखिए निश्चित तौर पे हम मजबूती के साथ इंडिया गठबंधन के अपने पार्टनर के साथ खड़े हैं और कांग्रेस ऐसे एक्शनों से भारतीय जनता पार्टी को कहना चाहती है कि डरने वाली नहीं है हम पहले से भी ज्यादा मजबूती के साथ दिल्ली के अंदर और देश के अंदर अपने गठबंधन पार्टनर्स के साथ चुनाव लड़ेंगे और इस लड़ाई को भी लड़ेंगे Having this press conference jointly being conducted by AAP and Congress, given all that has happened between these two parties in the past, that they are now coming together, is that a sign of desperation? Is a sign that desperate times call for desperate measures? Sandeep Dixit, for example, uh, also now coming in support of AAP Aadmi Party. Remember, Kejriwal took on his mother, defeated her. Your response? You know, Rajdeep, what's playing out today? It's quite amazing in terms of because at least it's bringing the Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party together. Because if there was one person, if you would ask me for somebody who's covered Delhi politics for a while, that I would put my money on and say that. No matter what, he will not be here, and that's Sandeep Dixit. He's been the biggest beta of the Aam Aadmi Party. Uh, he's been uh, against the alliance between the Aam Aadmi Party and uh, the Congress. Um, at he's the one who's constantly, uh, you know, uh, charged at the Aam Aadmi Party where the alleged liquor scam is concerned. So if he is there, then clearly there's messaging that has come from the top, and messaging has come in multiple ways. Rajdeep, you have Mr. Khadge. to rahul gandhi to priyanka gandhi the top echelons of the congress party have come out in full support of arvind so you are seeing the arrest i think it's galvanizing it's, it's galvanizing the india alliance i feel Her, uh, mr khurana does that worry you at all that if anything no, what no. what this could do is bring all these parties together the opposition alliance which appears to be in disarray could come together because of the way 
uh, they are all saying that your government is arresting their leaders. Is that a worry? Yeah, I, uh, Rajdeep, I want to know where Ajay Makan right now is. Why not is coming out? In fact, no, I, I interviewed, ju just for your information, I interviewed Mr. Ajay Makan and he told me that he saw this as vindictive action. I interviewed him a short okay. while ago okay. and he says but this is vindictive action. It's okay, it's okay. But the matter of the fact is, what the Congress claim is, Ajay Makan claims that he, they were the first complainant of this, this liquor scam where now Arvind KG was in jail. Mm -hmm. I mean, now Ajay Makan don't want to take a credit on this. It's up to him. But the fact is, what they claim, Congress used to claim that the Ajay Makan was the first complainant. You, you, you covered that, and you know that well, what Ajay Makan used to used to do, do it. I want to don't want to go into that. Sandeep, I understand the problem of Sandeep Dixit right now. Sandeep Dixit ko chunav lanna hai from from North East Delhi. So he want to support. He he want to support it. But as far as BJP is concerned, we are least bothered about that. We all know that the whole country is seeing their uh, thug bandhan or what you want to call but it. Can I, no, I, but, can I you, but, but can I ask you? But can I ask you this, Har uh, Harish? Harish, Harish, when the statistics show that night. Harish ji, when the statistics show that 95% of those being arrested are opposition leaders by the ED, you believe that the nation must accept that this is not vindictive in any way? Yeah, boss, tell me one thing. 350 crore rupees, uh, Congress ke kar mein cash milega, so will ED will not take action on this. Still, would Congress uh, uh, leader to get a 50 crore rupees cash, will, uh, will ED not, you expect that ED will not take action on this because he's an opposition leader? I'm sorry to say that. Okay. Law is taking their own course. Law is taking its own course, says Harish Kurana. If, 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 if you have a problem with ED, sir, sir, court is open now. Nah? Why are you not going in the court and say... Okay, this, point, this, point, this, point, this, taken, point taken. Let, let Adil respond. Adil, let respond. Me, let, me, let, me, let me demolish what my friend is saying. I'm going to give you five examples, five names against whom none other than the Prime Minister of this country made serious allegations of corruption. Ajit Pawar, Ashok Chavan, Mukul Roy, Mr. Hemanta Sarma, Captain Amrinder Singh. When they joined the Bharatiya Janata Party, their cases have disappeared. Does this not demonstrate BJP's political hypocrisy and the misuse of agencies? I've given you anecdotal evidence. No, I don't remember when he called Captain Amrinder Singh corrupt. I you remember in Barmer. I'll, I'll give you an example. Before the 2014 elections at Barmer, he spoke about the Panama bank account of his wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said. Okay. He said that in Pakistan. The case, so case, therefore, case, so therefore, so therefore, so no, no, Harish, let him speak. Harish, let him complete. So five clear examples. There are umpteen more examples, but I'm giving you five clear examples. So okay. what does this demonstrate? This demonstrates that the BJP is misusing agencies. Mr. Modi is replicating his Gujarat model across the country. This okay, is what he that's, did when he was the minister. That's and the Congress. Been, that's the Congress the perspective. Country. I want to go back to the ground to see what's happening. Akshita uh, is manfully there uh, uh, on the ground, womanfully there on the ground. It's late <laughs> in the night. And Akshita, what are you seeing uh, around you at the moment? There's been speculation that the arrest uh, has, already, of course. The arrest has taken place, but speculation that he could be taken to the ED headquarters any time now? That's right. Yeah, yeah, Rajdeep, I'll just show you what's happening here. And I'll get in Mr. Sandeep Dikshit as well. Uh, Mr. Dikshit, Mr. Sandeep Dikshit, if you could just speak to us for a second, sir. We're live on India today. I just wanted to know why have you decided to come here to show your solidarity with Mr. Kejriwal? Why did you feel it was important to be here? Ma'am, the issue is, what is the whole incident? You have a, a particular case going on. In that case, you thought that Mr. Kejriwal is a key witness and ED wants to question him. Fair enough. Mr. Kejriwal decided that he would not like to appear. You went to court. Court, I don't know what relief court gave you, but issue is if you want to question a person, what is the basic way in which you do it? You call them in the morning, you issue summons, you get that people over, they talk to you, then whether you are satisfied or not, ED can take their further action. What is it they are doing? You go to a person's house late at night, right? It is not, not that you can question him tonight. You raid a person's house. Is there any humanity, any legality involved in this? And is he a criminal? At least till, as of now, he's not been proved to be a, anything like that. So our thing is, it is the inhumanity, illegality, and almost an amoral manner in which the government is acting. Secondly, why is everything happening when elections are happening? And if you see the day the India Gatbandan came together, A, Modi and his party started attacking the India Alliance, and one by one, they've been attacking and trying to either 
have threatened India Alliance partners or try and weaken them. They froze our accounts in the most unconstitutional manner. They arrested Hemant Surain in a most bizarre manner and they've done the same with Arvind Kejriwal. But can you really question the timing here because this is a case that's been going on for the last few years. Nine summons have been issued. Are you expecting that there be a pause because of the elections? No, it's not, it's not a matter of a pause before the elections. I can also ask, what about coming this night? What is it that they will do between 9 o'clock tonight and 9 o'clock tomorrow morning? Right? Is there something that, you know, people speak the truth only at night and not in the daytime? I mean, can you be as ridiculous as that? Okay? You have asked for summons. Okay? Legally, Mr. Kejriwal approached the, uh, went to the court and said, I would not like to appear right now because he had certain suspicions with regard to that. It is ED that went to court, right? If the court has given you relief, then you, uh, you go back to your normal operations and we are not against anybody being questioned by the ED. Issue is not that. Uh, our president was also called. Mr. Kharge went to ED. Sonia ji went to ED, right? Rahul Gandhi ji went to ED. It's not a matter of going to ED. It is the matter of what you do after that and the manner in which you do it. And that is inhuman. And all these activities suddenly get a spurt when the India Alliance forms and the election starts coming in. And look, timing is important, okay? You see, for example, suppose a person is unwell. Right? Will, will you arrest that person at that point of time or if there is a wedding going on? No, therefore, there is an importance attached to timing. And is it a case in which three days here or three days there could have made such a big difference? Right? So my thing is this, this timing is so suspicious that it destroys the credibility of ED. In any case, there was no credibility of the ED in my mind. But I think even normal thinking citizens who would otherwise probably think that no, ED perhaps has a role to play, they will look at the timing and I think the last vestiges of credibility of the ED will get destroyed. Mr. Dikshit, thank you very much for joining us here on India Today. So Rajdeep, you just heard from Mr. Sandeep Dikshit. There's a huge Congress delegation that's just arrived here and they've made it clear that the ARPS fight is now the Congress's fight. The ARPS fight is the India bloc's fight, which is why you're seeing all the allies coming together in a show of solidarity here as they take forward this agitation. Arvind Kejriwal could be taken out any time now. He's going to be taken to the ED headquarters while we stand very, very close to his residence. This area completely barricaded. It's not expected that his convoy will be taken out from here but from the other gate so all of the leaders gathering here are now sending across a message to the enforcement directorate to the government because they say it's completely politically motivated Akshita appreciate you're joining us you've got a long night ahead of you because this is only the start of what's going to happen I guess uh, with uh, Arvind Kejriwal all the drama that's unfolding in and around Arvind Kejriwal at the moment but uh, that's the story. Shreya Chatterjee also with us. Shreya, uh, Aadmi Party workers, what are they planning tomorrow? We've been told that there will be protests at different parts of Delhi and indeed in Punjab as well. There's a Punjab angle coming. Bhagwan Man likely to lead protests there. Can you give us more? Uh, well, yes, Rajdeep, that is uh, what is being suggested. The Karyakartas of the Ahmadmi Party have been asked to mobilize tomorrow to protest in large numbers uh, after the arrest of Arvind Kejriwal. And uh, even today when the uh, protesters were gathering, especially over here, they were very quickly detained for security purpose. But tomorrow, in all likelihood, we will possibly see a bigger protest so far as Ahmadmi Party is concerned. And as I talk, just for a quick update, this entire region, which is probably the gate from where Arvind Kejriwal will be taken out, has been cordoned off in a manner that there is free vehicular movement. Uh, I'll ask my cameraman to show you the stretch of the road that in all likelihood will be used for the secured movement of the sitting chief minister of the national capital who's been arrested by the ED. So any moment from now, we will see the action taking place over here from where Arvind Kejriwal will be taken out to the ED headquarters. Okay, so we'll wait and see uh, how that plays out. Uh, more, more of our reporters... Uh, are, of course, spreading out at different points of the city. Uh, Preeti, uh, in the immediate 24 hours that now come, uh, who will be in charge of the Delhi government? Uh, you've been saying that the AAP has, been, has, been, has a plan in place for Mr. Kejriwal to remain in jail and still carry on as chief minister. Sukram was the last example. Is that the only plan or is there a possibility that at least in the next 24 hours, there could be a change in plan. Well, I don't see it happening in the next 24 hours. I don't see it happening at least uh, till the time it is 
you know, imperative that it has to happen. Because I see the Aam Aadmi Party even approach the top court of the country where it comes down to him keeping his office and running it from court. So the plan A, B, C right now for the Aam Aadmi Party is plan A, which is Arvind Kejriwal, uh, in terms of governance, in terms of administration, in terms of strategizing where Delhi is concerned. Already you have an Atishi who's taking care of most of the portfolio. She's assisted by Saurabh Bhardavaj. But are they leaders that can keep the party together? Because it's not just the Lok Sabha now. You have in a year and a half, you have the Delhi elections coming up next year and what will that augur because right now um, essential where the Delhi unit is concerned is to keep their band of MLAs together what really works for them because strength wise uh, you know uh, they have the strength if they were in their 40s and not in their 60s then it would have been a different ball game so they have a brute majority if I can say and uh, you know that would be difficult to break as of now but on the other hand Rajdeep you'll have somebody like a Sandeep Pathak you know who'll step up in terms of where the larger plan is concerned because now Aam Aadmi Party is fighting elections in Punjab Aam Aadmi Party is fighting elections in her if Aam Aadmi Party is fighting elections in Delhi, who's going to take and care of Gujarat. all this? And in Gujarat. And in Gujarat. But yeah. Sandeep is more an organizer. organizer. Who's, who's the face? Till so Mr. It'll have, it'll have to be Bhagwant Maan. Bhagwant Maan is the next big face, political face, who can go out there, campaign, connect to the voters, you know, uh, hold those rallies and try and touch that raw nerve of the voter where Arvind Kejriwal's uh, you know, arrest is concerned and try and invoke sympathy. Bhagwant Man is a people's person. He's going to now try and step into shoes mm -hmm. of Arvind Kejriwal because he was always a second to Mr. Kejriwal. Now he'll have to be number one. He has no option. Mm -hmm. Interesting how this is going to Raghav play out. Chadda, the absence of Raghav Chadda, uh, you know, uh, Rajdeep is also interesting because yes, he's, you know, he's in for a surgery, an eye surgery, but Raghav Chadda has been missing in action for the last month and a half. You Usually one would have seen him held most of those press conferences and not possibly an Atishi, not possibly uh, a Saurabh Bhardavaj. Is there a, a, you know, pressure where the ED is concerned because we do know off in the last one month, there have been raids on the staff of Raghav Chadda as well. Raghav Chadda right now, of course, is scheduled for an eye surgery and he continues to be in London. You know, the, there are lots of interesting uh, uh, though, uh, flashes coming out about what the, how the opposition is taking this. Uh, uh, Abhina Nandita, are you hopeful that the opposition will come together? You at one time, or you meaning the Amadmi party, was attacking the very, some of these very forces who today seem to be standing up for you when your leader is in jail or is on his way to jail. Do you believe that there will be a wider, that the India alliance will now come closer together? Well, not just the political parties. I think all right-minded Indians will. Uh, in a democracy, it is totally all right to, ha to compete with other political parties. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also all right to, you know, make uh, allegations and, uh, you know, to win elections and so on. So all that is under uh, totally acceptable. There is no problem. But what is happening in the BJP regime is extraordinary. It is an undeclared emergency. I mean, the ED has not taken permission from the election commission or informed the election commission today that they will be arresting a sitting chief minister of the a strong pers, a strong uh, candidate of the opposition. I, but so I'm, I'm not I'm not sure whether the ED needs to inform the election commission before they arrest an election commissioner. That's open to debate. But I just want to ask Mr. Kurana. Yes, I, in, I want to ask Mr. Kurana in conclusion. Mr. Kurana, do you fear this could boomerang? Or are you so confident that the election outcome is dead certain? You don't care what the opposition does. See, one of the opposition leaders has just called me up a few minutes, few minutes back. What he said interesting, and it's interesting to your viewers also. He said that Arvind Kejriwal ne apni arrest khud plan ki hai because he is fearing a big loss in Punjab and in Delhi. So just to get oh come on, Mr. Kurana, come on, come, come on, on, Mr. Kurana, you are really going to end my program by saying that Arvind Kejriwal has planned his own arrest? Kya, I'm Mr. Kurana? This. I'm not saying this. I said one of the leader from from Amandi party yeah, only. Okay, that's a WhatsApp joke. But I'm asking you very seriously: Do you fear it could boomerang or not? No way. BJP is clearly uh, getting all seven seats in Delhi with a more than 60, 65 percent margin. Okay, so it doesn't make a difference whether Mr. Kejriwal gets arrested. You believe there will be no sympathy, and that the elections are a done deal. This is uh, the channel that will track every moment of what's been happening. It's a dramatic day.
It started with the Congress holding a press conference claiming that their accounts were being frozen and tax notices from 94, 95 had been sent. Then you had the State Bank of India giving all the details on electoral bonds. I had guests organized for all those shows. But at the end of the day, this is what 24 hour news does. By the evening, we had the biggest story of the day, Arvind Kejriwal arrested by the enforcement directorate. How will this play out in the battle for 2024? What does this mean for the nature of our democracy, for notions of level playing field, for the role of the enforcement directorate? All those questions will continue to blow in the wind.